Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we are working on a 2015 BMW X3 with a uh, concern of a blinking check engine light and a shaking uh, rough running engine. Um, obviously, for those who already know, that's a misfire issue. But first I'd like to thank our first ever official Super Mario Diagnostics channel sponsor, Top Don. Top Don is making a great name for themselves by not only providing our industry with innovative tooling, but also showing their generous support for technical training both at a local level as well as a national level. In my experience, their customer service is second to none. They are the tools I pick up when working on complex diags and programming, and I recommend them highly. Um, I'm going to do this one a little bit different. I am going to not explain anything till the very end after the diagnosis is done. I'm just going to do this in real time too show because there's a lot of people who say well, well why would you use a scope for this and that i'm going to use a scope on this one um they say oh it's much faster to just swap coils swap plugs and then injectors and this and that it's like in my opinion that is not true um and i also get a lot of people say oh that took you that took you forever they don't keep in mind that i'm explaining a lot of uh, a lot of things as i'm going through the whole thing i'm just going to explain something real quick at the very beginning but after that once i start once i get out of this car I don't think I'm going to explain anything, um, do my diagnosis, and then at the very end, I'll explain what I saw. And you guys can um, see if you agree with me. Uh, first things first, it's a pre-scan. If you're going into a misfire diagnosis without doing a pre-scan, without checking codes, without clearing codes, you're going to be in a world of hurt um, because of cylinder deactivation. Uh, if we look at the ECM, we've got <clears throat> several cylinder misfire detected cylinder four injector is cut out we got cylinder two detected fuel injection is cut out so those of you who are approaching misfires without looking at codes and oh let me just pop the hood and start there no that's a big mistake you're going to look at uh cylinder deactivation and you're going to end up probably putting a pcm in something because you don't see any injector command you you may see a lean condition even if you're skilled at the scope you may see a lean condition and assume that the ecm is not commanding so don't make that mistake first things first we're going to clear codes and then we're going to go ahead and start diagnosing this thing hopefully by the time i get my scope and all that it doesn't go into cylinder deactivation immediately we're still processing it's still erasing i'm gonna pop the hood <laughs> I'm gonna try my best not to explain anything at all because it's so like, I don't know what it is, but it's kind of hard for me to just stay quiet and just work when I've got the camera going. It's taking quite a bit. This was supposed to be a real time session and now everyone's gonna be like, oh, well, this guy's taking forever. But you do not want to continue without clearing all the codes. Alright, our codes are cleared as you can see, our codes are cleared. Let's go ahead and diagnose this thing, I'm going to take this with me, I'm going to go grab my scope. So much noise out there. We do have a steel factory next to us, so let's go ahead and start the car. Felt it on number four. This is number four. three my diag is already done i already know what this is two but we had codes for number two why is it number two a problem my diag is done what's the problem you know what let me grab that capture again so we could review it and turn off the vehicle 
How many times did I have to turn on the car? This is not, this, don't take this the wrong way, people. This is not like, oh, look, this guy's just trying to show off. This is not, it's not like that at all. It's for those who, <sighs> who like to hate on the scope. This is a scope, fellas. This is an ignition analyzer, but it's a scope. What's that, fellas? That is no spark entering the cylinder. No spark entering the cylinder. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out Jim Morin's class on TST seminars in on YouTube. It's free to access. This stuff is out there. Also check out Mac Vandenbrink. He has a great video on this too. That took what? Less than a minute? Probably 30 seconds. If I you know if I didn't have to show the camera back and forth, I would have been done at uh, checking four, three, and two and and done. So you're probably asking yourselves, well, why is number two setting a code and cutting off cylinder, uh, the injector when only number four seems to be a problem? Firing order, one, three, four, two. Most four bangers are one, three, four, two. So one, three, four, it's misfiring. Which one follows? Number two, that one's gonna misfire. If the crank speed doesn't speed up at the rate that it's supposed to, it's gonna consider it a misfire. So due to number four misfiring so badly, number two is a problem. Now, what's something that I should be doing? Technically, if I want to do this all the way, I should be swapping coils to, to get an inside look at that cylinder. What do I mean by that? If you see Jim Morton's class, once again, there are a couple of things that overwork a coil more than anything else. It's lean conditions, high compression, and high secondary resistance. So, if the spark is not entering the cylinder, I have no visual into the cylinder. I can't use the, the waveform to analyze what's going on inside the cylinder. By putting a coil that I know is good into the cylinder that's already a suspect, I can take an, an inside look into the cylinder and see if a lean condition has caused the premature failure of my coil. Does that make sense? If it doesn't make sense, go check out Jim Morton's class TSC seminars. Well, my point is that I'm not against Swaptronics. Swaptronics, in my book, bad Swaptronics is changing out a part, guessing, charging the customer for it, being wrong, changing out another part, charging the customer for it, being wrong, and it's just, I mean, don't get me wrong, this, we're all trying here, we're all trying to get it right, right, but for the customer to pay every single time you're wrong, that's, that's a problem. So, to finish off the Diag, technically I'm done, and I could technically just inform the customer, hey, listen, we're gonna change your coil, and there could be an issue within the cylinder due to a lean condition that, that caused the premature failure of your coil, but we won't know that until we uh, replace the coil, yada, yada, yada. And spark plug, because it's part of the secondary system. So, technically, I could do that, but I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna go ahead and, and take an inside look into the cylinder and make sure, even though I'm positive it's not, it's not gonna be a problem, we're gonna make sure that there's no lean condition causing the premature failure of a coil, which will prematurely cause your new coil to fail. But this is really, this video is really to address the people who are saying, well, uh, you could just you know, swap the coil. Well, okay, you could swap the coil, yes. If it doesn't follow, then you're gonna swap the plug. And then, and this is a GDI. Those of you who know about GDI BMW plugs is that you don't reuse them. Um, and then on top of that, you, you, you keep with that, oh, let's swap this, let's swap that. Yeah, it's fast, sometimes it's great, but you don't get an inside look into the cylinder. You may cause, it may end up biting you in the back. If you have a slightly lean condition, it might come like two, three months later and bite you in the ass because the lean condition's overworking the coil. So I swapped my three and four, and I'm just gonna make a look, Take a quick look. My check engine light is off. It is not under cylinder deactivation. This is my number four. I may ha have gotten a one off here, but that does not look lean at all. Let's get another one. That was a one off. That does not look lean at all. Let's go to number three. This is a good way to confirm our diagnosis. Number three, no good. If for anything at all, you could use these tests to show, hey, listen, this waveform followed the coil, if for anything at all. So, I hope this video was useful 
um, in, ex in, in not only showing the advantages of having an actual visual representation of what we're seeing here. Let me shut off this car. But also to, like for the people who complain that I talk, oh, you're taking forever, I could have diagnosed that so much faster. I'm explaining stuff here. It, took, it takes more time to explain this stuff than it does to actually diagnose it. Do you really think that I'm gonna take that long? <sighs> well, anyway, <laughs> I know somebody's gonna get pissed off at that one, but <clears throat> the point of the video is to show the advantages of using a scope or some kind of a, rep, a visual representation. You can go show to the, to the customer, show that professional aspect of it, right? You know, instead of just saying, hey, listen, we swapped your coils, uh, your coils no good, that's our test. There's, 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 there's a difference there. There's, there's, there's marketability, there's, there's, there's value added in these tests. It's not just for, uh, you know, self, uh, it's not just to, to please yourself. It's not just for that. It's, there's, the whole point is to show the customer something, have something to bag it up. Hey, listen, we got this waveform. This is huge red flag towards high secondary resistance. This is going, this is finding another path to ground, which is not inside the cylinder. And to, for good measure, we swapped the coils and we proved that a lean condition within the cylinder was not present, causing that spark to find the least path of, uh, least path of resistance outside the cylinder. Because that's what happens. When the cylinder is very lean, it creates such a high resistance for the spark to overcome that it'll just find another way that's easier uh, outside of the cylinder, which can happen through carbon tracking. And I, I'm going off the rails here. Just go watch Jim Morton's video. Go watch every secondary ignition waveform video, secondary ignition analysis, primary ignition waveform, all that good stuff. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And if you have to, I've watched it like four or five times, like to, just to get it down packed. And even then, I'm learning every single day. So I hope you all have the same attitude towards learning this stuff. And I uh, appreciate you all for taking the time to watch. This probably turned out to be like such a long video, but um, it needed to be said, you know. And there's nothing wrong with diagnosing using a scope due to the value added. And there's nothing wrong with swapping coils, but you could see the advantages of having a visual representation over just swapping coils. Um, the only thing I am against is if you just buy a brand new coil from the parts place, throw it on there, charge the customer, and then continue on that cycle, like changing the part, charging the customer, getting it wrong, changing another part, charging the customer. That's what the entire, I think if the motoring public is somehow miraculously watching this, I'll tell you right now, we all disagree towards doing that stuff. The ones who don't, the, the ones who do that stuff, uh, let it be known that we're, we're against that. So, just to put that out there. Thank you all for watching. Take care. Till next time.